Evening and welcome to the program Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodi. Welcome to today's uh, broadcast. Today's uh, topic is definitely going to be very, very educating, and we're hitting into the health sector. We'll be looking at the prevention and management of uh, the menace of hepatitis. Uh, we have A, B, C, and uh, if possible, D, but we'll be looking at uh, the word hepatitis and uh, what's the dangers it portends and how to prevent it, and if possible, also manage it. Uh, one person who will be helping us uh, look at this very interesting topic is not a person, but uh, Uma Haruna, who is uh, a clinical pharmacist, and he will be helping us look at this very interesting uh, topic. Uh, Uma Haruna, thank you for joining us in the studios this thank evening. You. Thank you for having me. All right. And good afternoon. All right. Let's look, let's, let's look at the issue of uh, prevention and management of the menace of hepatitis. Uh, how would you describe what is hepatitis if, if you were to uh, describe it for the layman to understand? Okay. Um, hepatitis is actually, um, um, so I should put it simply, the inflammation of the liver, um, which could be... Um, caused as a result of several um, things that could happen. It, 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 it could be um, caused by the viruses, um, which you mentioned, either A, a B, type A, B, B C, D, D or E. E. Uh, ah. Actually, you, you missed I, two out I, of I, that. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, okay. and there are other causes like drugs. Um, you have um, the other toxins like aflatoxins and you have other causes. Is, is, it, is it true that uh, sugar uh, could also inflate the, the, the liver and also cause some damage? Um, the issue uh, talking, of sugar, yeah. Talking of sugar, inflating the liver to yeah. cause damage. Um, diabetes, sugar as we know, uh, when in the system, or oh, like the layman causes sugar, but actually it's glucose in glucose, the system. Okay. Um, causing, if there are metabolic issues, like um, resulting to what we call um, diabetes, and you know, th that diabetes in itself could maybe in one way or the other um, temper or um, affect Perfect. the liver um, metabolisms Metabolism. and. Um, cause that inflammation and we, who knows if we Okay, you, you, you talk about inflammation of the liver as, uh, as hepatitis, yes. right? And then let's look at uh, how do we, in, in terms of the symptoms, how, how do we begin to see that, okay, this is hepatitis B, A, B, C, D, or E? Or what are the, like, the symptoms? Okay, um, the symptoms of hepatitis, you um, first, initially, it's it's a kind of flu-like symptom. You okay. have it initially, um, but as the disease progression, you see discoloration of the skin and the eyes, you know, yellowing of the skin, and, uh, basically, and the eye. And um, as it progresses, you start seeing other GI symptoms. There's gastrointestinal tract. The, okay. uh, you have vomiting diarrhea, you know, nausea and all that setting in, loss of appetite, you know, and as the disease progresses, you, there are a lot of other symptoms that could um, be seen. And okay, in terms of uh, hepatitis, we, do we class it as bacteria, virus, or what, what class does it fall into? It's a viral infection, infection. yes. Okay, and so, so that means it can be contracted to... Yeah, the, you, when you are talking of the mode of transmissions, you have to look at the various types. Okay. Yes, you like for so, the... So can we start with type A, for instance? Yes, for the type A, for instance, you, it could be contacted through um, fecal oral means. That's um, a, an infected um, O... A normal person okay. ingesting an infected water or food that has been contaminated with fecal um, um, residues of maybe an infected hepatitis okay. patient. Okay. Uh, so, so you could have that. In that, it could lead to hepatitis A and E. 
you understand? Yeah. Then when hepatitis B, it could be sexually transmitted or through blood to blood um, transfusion, it could be maybe organ trans uh, transplants and um, also some other means that are similar to that of um, HIV and AIDS so that it's um, popular and common. Okay. And okay. that of that's for B. For okay. C, C has a kind of resemblance with B. B. Okay. Though more of a blood-like transmission. That's for B now. Yes, for 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 C for now. For C. Okay. Yes, for C. And D, for someone to have D, you, it simply means that the person already has hepatitis B. For you to have C, yes, it means you you have B. Yes, you have. Uh, does it also uh, mean you also have had A already? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. You see, B and D goes hand in yeah. hand. B and D goes, yes, hand, in goes hand. hand in hand. Yes, hand in hand. Why do they go hand in hand? Why? Because why uh, they, they, they the 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 B virus, okay. the 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 D the D virus, okay, needs a B as a substrate. Okay. It's it's a kind of in in the viral replication okay. for it to grow, grow and cause the disease. You, you, it needs a B to okay. actually grow. That's as for the D. You understand? Sure. Okay. Yes. Uh, do the D doesn't the B doesn't depend on any Anything. D to, to to actually grow and cause mm. infection. Infection. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's been said that. Uh, of all these types, it looks like type A, B, C are more popular or more frequent. Is that is that the case? And why, if that's the case, why is it so? Yes, um, when you look at um, the epidemiology, okay. the spread, you find out that um, the C and B are more common. Is, the, is, the, is there a reason why? Yes, the reason why it's um, because the body in itself could actually take care of A and E. A and E. Yes. The body Does it, the no, body can fight yes, can fight it on its own. Okay. In short, um, in children with one um, between one and age ten, okay. they you find out that most of those children have one time or the other in their life gotten hepatitis A. Okay. Or e, but their body was able to resolve it on its own. The body will, will resolve it normally on its own. But as for B and C, they now progress into causing some other problems, which could lead to some uh, liver damages, uh, in some cases even liver cancers and all that. So by the time you now you have that as an end organ damage, you okay. see it more, um, what we call it, more rampant. You see people coming down with the disease more than an A or an E that is easily taken care of. And as I told you, the D needs a B to actually uh, cause, mutate. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so by by somebody having B, when you get to the hospital, part of the the test you run is also. Um, a hepatitis D test. Uh, okay, well, when we look at this, the, the spread of these uh, different types A to E, uh, yes. can can we safely say the, the spreading pattern is the same or is different? It's it's actually different. Um, from as I, I said, said earlier, earlier that um, A and B is for food. Yes, A and E. e okay, is fecal oral fecal transmission. Oral. Yes, okay. fecal oral. When you say fecal oral, yes. uh, for uh, uh, those watching, that's what I tried explaining. Cleaning. That an uninfected person now ingesting um, water or food infected with fecal, um, and fecal residues of when you say that's fecal, feces. Physics, okay. Yes. That like poo. Yes, poo. Okay. Of an infected like person, hepatitis patient. patient. Yes. That's, uh, that's for E and A. But while for B and C, mostly there, 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 though there are some, some differences in the mode of transmission, especially when it comes to sexual intercourse, B has more of the um, sexually transmission ability and um, it's it's um, um, man to man 
um, homosexuality. Oh, uh, that's where yes. that's where hepatitis B B also is found when yes, when yes. Ho homosexuals. Yes, and all. Okay. But you don't see that in in, in C. What about for lesbians? Is it the same no, thing for that B? It's it's not really that same because yeah. of of um, maybe the process of of okay. the whole um, homosexuality uh, activities activities in okay. the man to man. man own than the female to female okay, okay let's look at uh hepatitis a and if possible b and say uh who, who would you say are the people more at risk in getting this uh, kind of infection okay um first um people as in uh, gender yeah gender uh, okay. and if, if possible each 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 uh, group okay um for gender for hepatitis b you have in short for both b and c you have more meals coming down with with the disease more but for b it is um increased in b i think it's about 64 percent in nigeria here for hepatitis b for meal while okay. about 30 something percent 37 or 36 percent from females you know and when you come to see you have 56 percent for hepatitis C for male, but in the female now okay. for C, it's now increased to about 40 something, 46, they are about percent. Okay, so that's for male and female. Yes, about, for male oh, and female distribution. In, in terms of uh, for children, adolescents and youths, uh, where do they fall in? Which of the types are they likely, most likely to be infected with? Uh, children, uh, you see what happens is, um, yeah, children, could get any of the hepatitis. They Including could, the B that is sexually transmitted? Even the B, yeah, there is what we call the mother to child transmission. Okay. Yes, uh, of hepatitis. And it could happen in hepatitis B. You see more of hepatitis B in children actually than okay. they see. In C, mostly as a result of maybe blood transfusion in children. Uh, okay. Maybe sickle cell anemia, you know, and other um, diseases that might warrant that um, kind of. Then, although uh, other means of transmission, of course, that could predispose a child to that kind of um, to hepatitis C. But mostly in hepatitis B, yeah. that there are stages where you safeguard oh, um, a child from contacting it from the mother okay. uh, both from when the mother takes in uh, when she's pregnant right. okay. then at the stage of delivery then post delivery in three of these stages you have a kind of preventive mechanism that is placed to safeguard the child from really uh, from coming down with hepatitis for the mother when um, um in territory when when the the child is still I'm yeah, trying to in get the, the, in the womb. womb. Yeah, yeah, in the womb. So that I let me not bombard you with my my medical Make terms. terms. Okay. Yeah. When the child is still in the womb, at week 23 or 28, you now institute um an antiretroviral drug. You understand? So that the mother um viral load, load will okay. not be that high, high to be able to cause um uh, or transmit Wait. the virus to the child. Child, okay. Then at point of delivery, you immediately the baby is given back to you inject the baby with what we call immunoglobulin. Okay. Yes. You, you it's it's a it's a drug that is used to actually to also prevent the baby from, from coming down with what the mother has. House, okay. Okay. Then also, you still go ahead and give the baby normal doses of immunization that is usually given to a normal baby that is given birth to even without um, a, a mother that is not having hepatitis. Is, okay. That's a hepatitis negative mother. Okay. Uh, and you can you go ahead and give that immunization. Though when you are giving them at different sites, of course, not the same time. Then in the future, there are also... Um, immunization um, regiments okay. that uh, have already been set to actually 
um, prevent a child from coming down with hepatitis. And um, usually... Let's still talking about this hepatitis B. It's been said that uh, uh, if a, a chronically affected mother gives birth, 90% of, her, of, her, of the time her infant will be infected and develop chronic hepatitis B. How true is this for yeah. a chronic mother who is infected? They say 90% of the time the baby is infected. You, That's you, why uh, 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 the uh, drugs uh, given to, you know, prevent that. Yes, uh, you see, uh, um, this, I, uh, it's, it's in a um, case of a mother that did not really access the care, care that okay. we mentioned earlier. But the mother that has uh, undergone through these three stages okay. of therapy, I don't think she will come down with um, the, baby the baby will come down with um, hepatitis, uh, hepatitis uh, B. B you know uh, because um, but, uh, but in the case when it does happen what yes. what, what should be the follow up uh, as, as a way you, of you, safeguarding this baby you, you um, continue with the protocols there is a okay. set down protocol for managing hepatitis um, and patient and you you take the baby in and continue with the normal standard protocols for managing him. But it doesn't lead to uh, death. Though how, how chronic could it be that probably baby might not be able to survive? You see, the, 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 the thing about a child is the fact that the organ in itself okay. is growing. Okay. It's, it's, still, it's, it's, it's just developing. So you wouldn't like to come down with a baby with the has end organ damage okay. that's maybe coming down with uh, maybe um, liver failure and all that okay. so as much as possible you institute therapy at the same time not really compromising the um, main functions of the liver in itself and the drug not being a burden to the liver in itself again you understand so you yeah. institute therapy that's why i say there's a protocol to really managing that kind of a, a case okay let's look at uh, c d and e and uh, uh, how how uh, chronic would you uh, you know describe those other types of hepatitis um you see for hepatitis c when once you say hepatitis c you the standard protocol is you institute therapy Okay. Yes. Once the patient comes down with uh, um, 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 hepatitis, uh, C. hepatitis C, you institute therapy, and uh, there are specific um, um, base combinations that are okay. used to actually treat um, hepatitis C. Okay. Then, uh, yes. if we decide to move to D and E, how chronic are those other For two? For D and E, like I keep you, saying, you mentioned E was. A and E, right? Yes, yeah. A and E are self-limited. Okay, yes. the body Even can fight. You don't take anything, the body can fight it. Now, where it poses a challenge is where it coexists with other comorbidities. Okay, and that's like other a, diseases. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> you, 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 now, <laughs> you have started to understand our yeah. own language. Uh, so, when it exists with other diseases like HIV, okay. like uh, either of the hepatitis C or B. Okay. Now that is a challenge on its own, and you try to manage. But once you leave it for hepatitis um, E, between seven to fourteen weeks, it resolves on its own. Without treatment. Yes. Yes. Without treatment, it resolves on its own. For hepatitis A, you see, there is there is a there is a vaccine for it. So you don't even wait till it it um, it sets in. But even if it you'd not even take the vaccine, it's it's self limiting. It takes care of itself. It takes care. So of that means hepatitis is not as dangerous as we think. It's is very you? very dangerous, sir. Very very. Uh, the, the, I was going through a UN report, yeah. which they say one in every twelve persons moving around the world is having one form of hepatitis, viral hepatitis. Mm. And it's the leading cause of death in Nigeria currently. In as Nigeria? Speak. Yes. Amongst the male folks or just Amongst general? Amongst the whole general population is the leading cause of death. Uh, okay. Worldwide, 
it's it amounts to 1.4 million deaths annually annually yes it amounts to 1.4 million deaths and and yeah over 400 million people are infected worldwide with hepatitis so so it's a it's a it's a big deal it's actually a, a big deal 400 people coming down with um, infectious and um, hepatitis is. is a big and that's why the un in its um 59th general assembly okay um um came down with um resolutions sure, yeah. yes to tackle um hepatitis yes. uh, well let's look at uh, nigeria as a, as a case study looking yes. at the different the six geopolitical zones of the country yes. uh, what areas would you say uh we have more prevalence in terms of having hepatitis uh, a b c d and e which which of the zones and why is it you know you see i i tried um looking at um the um, geopolitical distribution Nations. of okay. hepatitis um, and that um the statistics the statistics is not really really there because i tried looking at the national hepatitis um National guidelines, guidelines you know, yeah. on, on hepatitis C, and uh, the one I saw was the last. The last update was by the former minister of health, health. Professor um, Adewale, um, Isaac Adewale. Adewale. Yes, that was in 2016, uh, 2017. Uh, what, what did the statistics say? Uh, the statistics are saying about 20 to 23 million people yes are infected, and you have mostly yes male. But it doesn't really give a geopolitical distribution Mission. to it. Yes, and okay. Let's uh, because uh, one of the essence of this program is uh, the prevention and management yes. of uh, this menace. Uh, let's look at uh, prevention. Yes. Uh, of before we enter the prevention, let's look at what are the likely things. Uh, yes, you mentioned feces, contaminated food, and all that. What other forms of hygiene could help Nigerians prevent this? Yes. Um, uh, the first thing is, um, like you mentioned, personal hygiene. You made mention of hygiene. Yeah. Personally, you need to take care of yourself. Then environmental sanitation and all that. That's, it's, it's, it's very important when you talk of hepatitis A, E. Even the, the other forms of hepatitis, to actually take care of yourself, it's very important. And... Um, also, you need to um, create awareness, like what we are doing yeah, now. Yeah. You, you know, it's it's creating awareness, and um, we need to take it a bit more further because a lot of people that move around with the hepatitis don't, don't even know that they have it until one thing or the other takes them to the hospital, and then you run tests and begin to see that they have it. So, so that in itself is very important. Then we have other preventive um, this thing like um, the immunization I talked of, and, okay. and that good, uh, safe and proper use of um, condoms, and um, um, going for mothers to to child, child transmission. Yeah. Mothers going to register in a proper antenatal facility, and you know attending those antenatal classes and all that matters a lot because now there are, are protocols that every pregnant woman that visits the center for an antenatal care you part of the tests run there must be hepatitis you know screening for her and uh, there are other you know um, things carried on all right let's look at uh, uh, in terms of hepatitis c uh, it's been said that most of the uh, uh, transmission is basically due to uh, chain of needles mm -hmm. and uh, how important is it for uh, Nigerians uh, to know that uh, chain of needles and some other uh, you know items could also cause or make them you know get infected see, the especially those who drug users uh, because they also share needles a lot you see um, hepatitis C tends to be more should I use the word deadly more deadly yes than hepatitis b because uh, the current statistics show that 80 okay. percent of people that get infected with hepatitis c c okay now slide down into 
a, um, a form of liver disease at the end of the day. Wow. You understand? 80% of people infected with hepatitis C, C. slide down with a, an end um, liver mm. disease. Okay. It could be liver cancer, it mm. could be um, liver failure, it could be liver cirrhosis. So, in itself, it's scary. So, nobody needs to tell you that, oh, stop the drug abuse. If you are using it, you say it's casual uh, using of drugs, but there's nothing casual. You need to just stop, especially people that share needles to do this. And um, also people that ingest these drugs in itself. Okay. Also, there are some drugs that could cause hepatitis. So okay. any a drug that could harm your liver, uh, you you should maybe get. I think a I, I think uh, we we'll just uh, we we'll quickly go for a very, uh, we'll go for a quick break uh, in case you're just joining us. We are looking at uh, prevention and management of hepatitis A to E, and uh, we've got uh, a pharmacist in the st uh, studio talking about clinical pharmacist in the person of uh, Omar Haruna, who is helping us look at this very big topic. We'll go for a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, the drugs and other things that uh, lead to this hepatitis which is uh, very deadly like you said hepatitis c is very deadly and so after this break when we come back we'll be looking at all those and other ways we can prevent this stay with us From the break, in case you're just joining us, uh, just uh, right in time, and uh, you're watching the program Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodu, and on today's edition, we're looking at the prevention and management of hepatitis, uh, either A, B, C, D, or E. And uh, one man who is here, a clinical uh, pharmacist and the person of uh, Uma Haruna, is the pers uh the health professional helping us look at this very interesting topic. Before we went on break, you were talking about some drugs that could lead uh, to someone getting infected. Yes. How possible is it that a drug can, a drug that's supposed to heal someone, is making you catch hepatitis A, B, C, D, or E? Um, you see, the, the, a drug usually gets metabolized in the liver. Okay. Um, and in the process of that metabolism, if the drug is could cause a problem in the liver, okay, it's it's and you are not taking it in the right doses, 
or um, the right quantity. The quantity, okay. You understand? It's it's it will actually cause that that um, the problem. The problem. Uh, yes, and um, uh, you you have several examples of those drugs. I don't want to really go in mentioning some drugs, but common paracetamol you see. Okay. Yes, at a very very um, what we call substantive dose could. Are you talking like taking four liver. tablets, five or? I'm not talking of taking four. If you might take four tablets, tablets yeah. and you scale of paracetamol. To, of paracetamol, and you are able to to scale you you passed that without getting any problem, another person might take just three, when he was supposed to take two, two. and it could cause him a very big problem. problem. So that's why we always talk of. Um, um, adherence or sticking to the dosing uh, regimen uh, okay. yeah, that is keeping given to you by the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, in case you're just joining us, uh, you could do well to call the numbers that will be displayed on your screen in case uh, you've had an issue as regards the hepatitis A, B, C, D, or E, or you want to ask any question as regards what we're talking about, you could do well to call the numbers that will be, that is uh, displayed on the screen already, and uh, our pharmacist uh, Omar Haruna will be very willing to answer the questions uh, just uh, so that you get well informed. All right, uh, let's look at all the other issues. You made mention while you were talking, you talked about the fact that someone could actually have this disease inside of him and not know he's carrying it. Why is it difficult uh, for someone to detect it? Because Aside going for tests and what kind of tests can be carried out uh, for someone to know if he is down with any of the hepatitis A to E? You see, um, most of the people carrying this disease and spreading it around don't even know they are infected in the first place and mostly you you have them because nigeria has more of the rural, rural areas than the urban cities okay. so and in the rural areas they are not really um subjected to some of these tests we are okay. talking of and to really see a village man say that he's just going to the hospital for normal checks is very difficult okay. he's always in the farm he's strong nothing until he comes down he's bedridden that's when they start going to the hospital at that time already the damage has already been You're done, done. Okay. and that's when you begin to know that oh it's hepatitis that has caused this problem oh he already has um, and um, liver fail, uh, failure or, uh, you know, uh, cancer of the liver and all that. But, but once you are able to dictate it with a common... I think, um, yeah, let's antigen. see, I think someone... Okay. Hello? Hello, good evening. All right, someone was uh, actually okay. trying to reach us. All right, uh, let's look at, uh, talking about the test, well, what's, uh, what's the cost implication of the test? Is it that expensive? I think Is we have lots of people that really want... Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. I can hear you. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Mohamed Bloy, calling from Adama State. All right, uh, Mohamed, go ahead with your question. Uh, good evening to the girls there at the studio. Yeah. Good evening, Mohamed. Um, please, I want to know what are the early signs of this hepatitis? and how can one prevent it? And then I want to appreciate you guys for bringing up this topic because it's a very important topic because most of Nigerians need to be sensitized on this hypothesis. My great contact with better country. Good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Muhammad. Just listen uh, while Umar Haruna takes us through. Thank you very much. All right, uh, so uh, he asked the question, early signs and uh, how can it be prevented? Like I mentioned in the beginning, the early signs you begin to notice, when it's set in the first week, it's just uh, flu-like symptoms, like someone having normal common flu. But as it progresses... Is it, are you talking about cough, kata? Yes, it it? yes, that's the yeah. flu-like symptoms okay. we're talking of. But as it progresses, you begin to see nausea, vomiting, 
abdominal pains, pains okay. diarrhea, fatigue, general uh, mali, you know, uh, and general body weakness. Yes. Okay. That's the uh, mali I mentioned, and you begin to see see um, yellowing of, of the, the eye, eye. Okay. especially this whitish part of our eye. Eyes. You see it yellow, and the skin too. There is discoloration of the skin. It changes color. Yeah, it's black. It's, it becomes it's fair. It becomes yellow. Yeah, okay. it becomes fairer and all that. You know, it's giving you signs, signs. that something you, is wrong. I think there's wrong. someone else who has another question. Hello, good evening. Hello. 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 All right. Uh, okay. Uh, then he also asked the question as we guess. Uh, prevention or treatment so to say once you get those early signs of yellow eyes and coloring of this uh, skin right yeah mm -hmm. you see the prevention first you you need to your water and the food you you it, eat, eat okay you you need to they need to be from very clean source. clean sources okay clean and reliable sources. sources that's the first thing the second thing is you need for those that have vaccines that's Yeah. Yeah. there's a protocol to it uh, and normal it's, it's, it's got into sex yes B. Okay. sex using of um, um infected, needles. infected needles you Tooth know brushes. Uh, toothbrushes and so, so one interesting thing i did not mention about hepatitis b about 30 percent of the cases are on of unknown sources about unknown sources. Yes. So they don't know if it's they sexual. They don't know where it was, it was sexual. Or, so, so by that, one needs to be very careful. One is that means there could be the maybe other, other body fluids that, when in contact with, could actually cause the hepatitis B. But you see, because the person didn't really remember what he was truly in contact with, that's why you have that much um, large number okay. of people for, for this man who has been suffering for 10 years uh, what would be his remedy right now what, what would you advise him to do you see uh, one thing with hepatitis b is once somebody is infected comes down with hepatitis b you you go for some other tests okay they do a hepatitis b profile for you profiling now when they do the profile for you there are things we call um, surface antigens, surface antibodies, envelope antigens, envelope antibodies. Now, knowing that in itself okay. is another this thing. But I, the best thing I will tell him is actually to seek a medical attention. He should go to the hospital. He get proper checks. But there are some people that live with hepatitis B. Hepatitis B not really affecting them. They have the disease, okay. but it's not really causing any damage. Obvious them. damage. Yes, or obvious damage. Is, is it causing them. damage that they, they do not know they, or it it's, doesn't it's cause? It's not. It's not. They yeah. are living with the disease okay. in a kind of, um, what will I call it? Mutual. It's mutual kind of relationship. Okay. It's, not, it's not harming me. It's not. It's there. 
the person has the disease. So like for this young man who called who said he That's why I said for 10 years. by the time you go when he reported to the hospital yeah. I'm sure they ran the profiling they did an LFT for him okay. and they found out that all those were in check everything was fine so he just has the antigen but all other things are, are just fine so he 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 wouldn't progress to let's say maybe yeah. a, a, a liver damage or okay. all that so they, they just he just keeps on what he needs to be doing is to regularly get checks he needs to go to the hospital and continually seeking medical examinations but let's, let's look at in terms of the cost implication of the treatment of uh, this disease how yes. expensive is it uh, how affordable is it and how accessible is it uh, getting medical experts who could actually do this but before you answer let's see someone wants to talk to hello good evening hello yeah good evening all right uh, we lost that uh try to call back and uh, we'll be willing to take your comments all right uh let's okay hello good evening hello hello yeah good evening what's your name and where are you calling from okay where are you calling from yeah from Nakara. all right uh, so let's hear, get your question quickly Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. My name is Pedro. From Nasser Office. If someone that is born with hepatitis B. Go ahead. Can the person be treated? Okay, is that all? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, he will respond to you. Just listen keenly. She's asking if someone who has hepatitis B can the person be treated. It looks like a lot of people feel like this disease cannot be treated. Uh, so you can see, you, you inform us more? The the treatment. I don't. Um, the treatment for hepatitis, hepatitis B, B. Yeah. For C, you have a definite treatment. treatment. You have a cure. Oh, there's Let a me cure. put it that way. You okay. have a cure for for C. C. But when oh, it comes to B, B. What's the you just problem need to treat it to the lowest viral load. load. Uh, you're saying it to cannot the, be eliminated completely. You, you, I, I wouldn't say that it can't be eliminated completely, but you can only treat to the bare Barest. to the lowest barest minimum. You know, uh, but it's completely for you not to to. Have it. it it's 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 um impossible. let me not say impossible but the, everything can be possible there's always room for okay uh, for her now where can she go to get this treatment and what's the likely cost implication for her she needs to go to the hospital are you talking about general hospitals private Any hospitals general hospital will be able to treat hepatitis okay you know if she goes they send her to the to the department where she will be cared okay. for but um, because because uh, implication. Yeah, because what I wanted you to uh, explain to her yes. is she going to go to the lab first? From the lab, she goes to the next. So, uh, without we can know the cost implication, and she mm. she prepares her mind towards the direction of the treatment plan. Yeah, you know, there is a standard. Um, what do we call it? Protocol treatment plan yeah. in in the in the hospital. Treatment. When you get to the hospital, you, you see the records and yeah, all, all that. that yeah. They send you to the. Uh, Mo, yeah. the medical officer who reviews you and sends you to the lab. When they find out that yes, you are, you have the hepatitis virus. What they do, they will now send you or refer you to the specific kind of specialist that will take care of your, okay, your, your problem. All right. Uh, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, good evening. Where are you? What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Chelsea. Okay, your name? Mohammed. Okay, Mohammed, go ahead. Make your. Uh, let's get your question quickly. All right, please. And I want to know whether if if it can be totally the hepatitis B, whether if you can be treated and you cannot be able to harm your partner in terms of when you are in the of marriage. All right. Is that all? Yeah, no. 
Okay. I believe we teach for like nine years, I think nine years. Nine years, okay. The other teachers, the SVB profile, everything is above the normal rate. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, but I don't know if there is any further precautions or prevention that I can take. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for sharing with us. He will definitely answer your question. All right, he said he's been living with you for nine years. Yeah. He wants to know if his partner, if he's going to uh, affect his partner when he's married and if there's a further treatment. But before you go, let's get this. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kaduna. Your name? Yeah, your name is what? Uh, Mr. Elijah. Okay, Mr. Elijah. All right, Elijah, let's get your question. Uh, my question is going the one girl asked the doctor about the hepatitis C. Yes. The doctor in Amsterdam, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. he said, is it terrible? Okay, you want to know if, if C is terrible? Yeah, what are you saying, Elijah? Are you you want to know how bad uh, hepatitis? I want to know. Hepatitis C is terrible. Okay. All right. So he will answer you. All right. Uh, f the first question about the partner, the man who has been there for nine years, and mm -hmm. he wants to know if he gets married, if he he's going to affect or uh, affect uh, his partner, and if there are further uh, tests or. I think he from, has to do. Yeah. from what I, I understand with him, it's like he's already seeking medical help, attention. Yeah, medical because attention he has done all those yes, yes, he, yeah. he even knew what he, yeah. he, they, they actually did for him. Yeah. So if they actually said, I'm sure part of the um, tests that I ran, it, maybe they did a viral load for load. him and they found out the amount of. Um, of, um, was in high. Uh, yes. yes. So oh. if 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 can he affect level, his, his his partner if he gets married? Yes, he could, but the level of of um, virus he has in him Cannot has to be at a certain level, level to aff to affect the partner. The, the partner. I've seen couples that have lived for more than seven years together, and there there was no cross um, transmission uh, transmission of, of the virus load. between. The fat, uh, All right, uh, the other and man the other wanted man to know how serious uh, hepatitis C was uh, in comparison to B. actually very serious okay. when you compare it to B. It's okay. more serious, more deadly. The only thing we say on hepatitis immediately you see a hepatitis C, C. just go to the hospital and get treated. Okay. All right. Yes. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Mark. I'm calling from uh, Kogi State. All right, thank you, Mark from Kogi. Let's get your question. All right, uh, Mark from Kogi. We lost you there. Do have to call back. Hello, good evening. All right, uh, I think Nigerians are really. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. We've like got uh, five minutes to wrap it up. Uh, from the questions you've heard from Nigerians, uh, uh, what should be your final words to them? Uh, first of all, uh, they are very curious about which of them is more dangerous. They are very curious about to know if it's going to be transmitted to their partner. And uh, can you? Hello, good evening. Yeah. Okay, Mark from Kogi. Yeah. Let's get your yeah, question yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Quickly, time not our friend. Yeah, it's someone who I know that okay. uh, was diagnosed and uh, for eight, eight, uh, eight weeks. Okay. That is two months. Okay. And uh, went back for B and uh, discovered that it's terrible. So I don't know. He used Harper. I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you. So it does it uh, encourage uh, using that one or what did the physician? All right, thank you very. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mark. All right, time not our friend. Quickly, uh, yes. just uh, do, do, do you encourage the use of harbor drugs? You see, for that treatment is one of... part I, I I really needed to yeah. touch on. Quickly, the use of uh, harbor time. drugs it's 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 really discouraged. Okay. Because you don't even know whether it's adding to the disease or not. Most of these herbal remedies are not yeah. standardized. Okay. They are not standardized, and um, you you you'll be amazed that 
some of them are even part of the uh, causes of the hypertitis, hypertitis. Okay. in the form of um, damaging, uh, damaging the, the liver. liver. Like okay. I mentioned the other, uh, when I was mentioning drugs. Okay. So, so the same thing could happen in herbal remedies. You don't know what it is in there. You just the take process. it and, okay. you know. So herbal remedies, no, no, go in area. area. Yes. All right. Uh, I think uh, most likely we're going to have a part two of this uh, discourse, uh, hopefully, uh, hoping that uh, Omar Ar Haruna, who is a clinical pharmacist, uh, will do us the favor if we call upon you to have a part two of this discourse, because obviously Nigerians are very, very keen to know more about uh, the, the disease cause. Uh, called uh, hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. All right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap on today's edition of the program. My name is Anthony Momoji saying thank you for joining me, especially for Nigerians who called from different parts of the country. Thank you very much. I promise you, hopefully, we will have a second uh, part of this program so that we can deal more extensively with other issues and your questions. Let's do this again next uh, week. Thank you.